Good morning, good morning everybody. Lovely to see you. Welcome to our service this morning. Um, it is a lovely day. I hope it's not too warm in here. Um, I don't think it'll be too long until we turn the heating off, uh, which will be exciting. Um, but uh, today I want to welcome you all to a service which is a service of Holy Communion. So we're going to be remembering what our Lord Jesus did for us on the cross. It's also a service where um, it's our Giving Sunday service, where we think about um, um, our finances of the church a little bit. So um, if you're um, a visitor, um, in, in some way this is, of course, uh, for you as you listen in to life of the church, but it's also not quite in the 100% for you because we're giving um, a sort of an update about what it looks like here at Holy Trinity uh, to be a part of the, um, the, the family um, that contributes to the finances of the church. So anyway, I hope it's really helpful uh, for you, whoever you are. Boys and girls, give me a wave. Where are you? I've lost you. There's one. You're another boy and girl. There's two. Hey, at the back. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, you've got your Sunday club later on, so look forward to that. And you'll be coming back uh, to remember the Lord's Supper with us later on as well. Right. Uh, hi to everybody on the live stream. Uh, and I'll say more to you later. And we're going to start off our service with a song that is a prayer. It's a prayer that all we do, all we hear today from God's word would shape our lives, that we would do what God uh, wants of us. So let's all stand and let's all sing. May the might of Christ my Savior. <laughs> Do have a seat, everybody. When Peter, um, the Apostle Peter, told the Jewish people, after Jesus had risen and ascended, that they were responsible for the death of Jesus, that they cried out for his blood, and that they had killed the one who had come to save them. When he told them what had happened, they cried out, what must we do to be saved? And Peter's response was this, repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repent and turn to God. 
it is the call for all of us, isn't it? To turn away from sin and turn back to the Lord. To turn away from going our way and go God's way in every area of our lives. Practically, mentally, physically, whatever it is. Where are we resistant to God's will? Where would we like to just go our own way? Where do you and I need to say sorry this morning? Let's take a moment of quiet and we're going to pray our confession prayer together. So a moment of quiet before we pray. So the confession prayer is on the screen. We pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Amen. 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, for your encouragement, everyone. 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let me say a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you very much indeed for the Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who was willing to show us what love looks like, that sacrificial death in our place. Thank you that before we loved you, you loved us. Help us this week to remember just how much we're loved, that we would live in the light of that this week, making choices for you and your honour and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to sing again. Let me invite Hugo up. I'll go this way. <clears throat> and um, what are we going to sing? We're going to sing... Um, we're going to sing a song that we haven't sung um, for over a year, so I think it'd be helpful for us to have it sung again, um, uh, to introduce it again. It's a wonderful song, all about that first Easter Sunday. Now, Lizzie May is giving you a challenge. Can you make her delighted in the music? <laughs> so good for that. Now, what is, uh, what is this song about? It's about the good news of Easter. It's about the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus' resurrection and the good news of Jesus' resurrection is for life, not just for Easter. And so it's absolutely right that even with Easter 2024 somewhat behind us, we keep on rejoicing in the risen Saviour. Right, let me give you a guitar one. Oh, that was easy. She just wanted to walk. Oh. Okay. There we go. So we're just going to sing verse one for you. Here we go.
just for Easter. That gives us great reasons to rejoice, doesn't it? Do have a seat, everybody. Okay, well, it is time for us to look at some notices for a moment. And um, the first thing to say is if you're sitting near the front of the church, you would have noticed that you've got a very, very comfortable bottom. And that's because um, we are replacing all of the, and we're making um, new pew cushions. I say we, it's the royal we, because I have nothing to do with it, I assure you. Um, but there, look at that, how lovely are they? And uh, we've got, um, how many have we got so far, Margaret? Margaret's masterminding the whole thing. We've got about seven or eight. The new ones are all over here. Oh, Shane, the new ones are all over here. Brilliant, oh, there we are. But um, look forward to that. Margaret has masterminded this, and uh, there's a lovely lady. What's her name, Margaret? Caroline has, um, is making them for us, and she's making them in batches. But um, as they fill up the pews, uh, look forward to that. Um, uh, right now, a nice incentive to sit near the front. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Now, what else is there to say? Um, huge thanks to Bob and Russ for Kingdom Men yesterday. We had a brilliant time, and 15 uh, uh, of us were gathered yesterday for bacon and Bible. And that was really, really wonderful and a real encouragement. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, next one is this week, uh, Home Groups Restart. Uh, home Groups Restart, yes. 
we're going to be looking at the most wonderful book of Daniel this term. Um, and um, if you're not in a home group, what's a home group? A home group is, uh, it spans all the ages. So we have, um, um, just, well, more than half the church is in a home group. So um, it really is a span of ages. And it's a place where we meet in uh, different homes. We study the Bible together. Uh, we then... Um, we pray for each other, uh, what happens in home group stays in home group, it's a place where it's really uh, a, a, a lovely opportunity for friendships and meaningful friendships at that. And I really want to encourage you that if you're not in a home group, speak to me. I would love the problem, um, in inverted commas, I would love the problem of needing to start another home group. I'd love that problem. Uh, we've got four, I'd love to start a fifth if it was, if it was needed. Uh, we have one in the daytime, which is on a Wednesday afternoon. And then the other three are in the evening, uh, on two on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. If opening the Bible in the midweek, stopping in your busy lives, opening God's Word and praying with your church family uh, is something you'd love to do, please speak to me. Don't let the opportunity go past. We're going to start it this week, so it's a really good time to give it a go. Um, now, it's not always possible for you to join a home group, um, the work commitments and all the rest of it, I absolutely appreciate that. And we'll try to do something as similar to the Bible course that we did a few weeks ago, when Bob and Margaret led that on a Sunday evening. We'll try and do something similar in the future. But for now, if in the midweek this is for you, crack on, do speak to me. What else is there? Next slide, please. Uh, thank you so much. Oh yes, next Sunday is the APCM. How fun. Um, this is where we will find out so much more about life in the church. We will look back so that we can look forward. We will look back at 2023 so that we can see how God is working and how we should be moving forward. That's next week. Children will be catered for. They'll get to watch um, uh, a film while it's going on. And then afterwards, we'll be going into the old schoolhouse, which has just been renovated, and we'll be having a church lunch. Is there anything I need to say about... Oh, Mel's not here. Is there anything I need to say about... The bring and share, do they? There's a sign up sheet at the back. Thank you. Anything you want to bring along, just let us know. Thank you, Gareth, very much. He wasn't primed for that, I appreciate that. Um, there's a sign up list at the back, and so um, if you are coming um, and could bring something to the bring and share lunch, that would be marvellous, and it would be so good. And this is going to be the start, um, I pray, of church lunches coming back. The master plan, because I like a good master plan, the master plan is that we're going to be starting church lunches on the first Sunday of every month. More to follow. Brilliant. Speak to me or speak to Marjorie um, if you want to know anything more about next week. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> I've written it here. Good job, isn't it? Birthdays and bands. Right. Um, Shay is watching online. Hello, Shay. And Bradley's here. Hello, Bradley. Shay and Bradley are getting married in a few weeks, um, which is really exciting. Shay and Bradley, um, not long, uh, finished the Christianity Explored course. And it was an absolute delight to do that with you both. And um, I, I know that it's been a really uh, wonderful opportunity for you to see who Jesus is and why it makes a big difference to start your marriage uh, with him in your lives. Um, so I'm so thrilled that you're here today. And I'm sorry that you're not feeling well, Shay, but I'm going to do this legal thing now so that you uh, can get married. This is one of three. Uh, we have to legally publish bans of marriage for people to get married in the Church of England. So let me do that now. I published the bans of marriage between Bradley Thomas Kerr and Shay Lee Robinson, both of the parish of St. Mary's Burfield. This is for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it to me. Let me pray for Bradley and for Shay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Bradley and for Shay. Thank you for their love for one another. Thank you for bringing them uh, into a relationship with one another. Uh, thank you so much that over the last seven weeks they've uh, been more and more drawn into a relationship with you. Thank you so much for uh, their engagement with Christianity Explored. I want to pray, Heavenly Father, very much that they would begin their married life um, in a way that brings you honour and glory, putting Jesus centre and walking with him. Help them with all their prep and all the final things that they need to do before their wedding day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Right, birthdays. Are there any birthdays? Helen. When's Helen's birthday? It was yesterday. Oh, hello. Happy birthday for yesterday. Did you say something? Yes. Who? Yeah, that's right. We'll sing to Jacinta when she's back. She can't. Yeah, she's probably did that on purpose to escape. We'll get her. Don't worry. Uh, but let's sing happy birthday to Helen. It was yesterday. Wonderful. Let's sing. Thank you, Meg. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Breakfast, was it lovely? Oh, wonderful. Good stuff. And your son's decided to start walking on your birthday. That's a good birthday present, isn't it? And there he is. Look at that! Whoa! Jump! There we go. <laughs> Brilliant. Well done, well done. Good stuff. Right, Lisa, where are you? You're up. Lisa's got um, something to tell us about Sunday Club and Pathfinders. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, so, <laughs> now it's on. I'm just taking a quick notice about Sunday Club. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot of our children aren't here today, being the last day of the holiday, so I might repeat this next week. But I just wanted to let you know that in Sunday Club, we're starting a new series today, which is running for four weeks, um, looking at um, the Psalms. And this is um, some material we're using by a new organisation called Faith in Kids. And the series is all about helping our young people to tackle big emotions using the Psalms. So we thought it would be just really helpful for our young people. And it does come as well with a take-home handout, which is, um, uh, so parents, guardians, bringing children, this is for you to um, look at with your children and use it to discuss what they've been learning and hopefully apply it through the week. Um, so yeah, please, if you're bringing young people, please do make use of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's really wonderful. We have some wonderful Sunday Club leaders who put in an awful lot of work with our young people uh, to give them the best time knowing about Jesus, and that's just great. So thank you, Lisa. Um, now, we're going to be um, starting a new sermon series next week. Today, um, I've said um, we're going to be thinking about uh, money, which, um, uh, I don't know, is that something that we talk about more now? Are we much better at talking about money? Or is it one of those things that we don't talk about enough? Well, um, hey, who cares? We're going to talk about it today. And so you've got a finance update in your hands. Um, uh, that's for you to take home, read, inwardly digest, and enjoy. Um, and I'll refer to that in a bit. Um, but that's for today. The next week, we're starting a new sermon series in Revelation. And um, I'm really excited about this. I, I'm excited about two things, really. I'm excited about the fact that um, after the Bible course, I was, for the first time in my ministry, I was approached by, uh, um, by many people, not just one or two, many people asking me to preach on Revelation and to preach on the book of Romans. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to preach through the book of Revelation. Um, um, we're going to do that a bit more in a sort of a thematic way. We're going to, do the, we're going to start slowly and work through each letter at the beginning of Revelation. And then we're going to speed up a little bit. But then we're going to go through the book of Romans and we're going to go through that consecutively throughout the entire book. And um, I am hugely excited about this. And um, I, I won't mind telling you, Revelation is a quite a challenging book. I started preparing for the sermons in January. So um, I, I trust that they will be a great blessing to you as they have been for me as I've been preparing. Good stuff. We're going to sing, and we're going to sing about how amazing God is, and our young people are going to be thinking about how God can help them in difficulties in life, and um, it's wonderful that we know we have the Bible that reminds us that God gets involved in the detail of our lives, and this song reminds us about that. So, um, if anyone wants to join me, you can join me at the front, and we're going to stand, and we're going to sing. Let's stand. Boys and girls, oh, well done, Alexander. You can come up to the front if you want. Ah, oh, thanks. Hello. Great. Let's all sing this together. It's a question. Oh no, don't do it, I'm a lion. <laughs> do you think that Daniel could escape the lion?
wonderful song. It reminds us how wonderfully powerful and almighty our God is. Okay, our young people are going to go out to their Sunday club. So I'm going to pray for you all as you go. So let's pray, everybody. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for each young person here. Thank you that they get to find out how you love them just as much as anyone else. Thank you that they're going to find out just how precious they are and how you are the one who speaks into their lives in the good times and the difficult times. Please give them a good time, we pray. Help them to come back to us safely. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Off you go. Are you up today? See you later. Well done, well done. And we shall see you later. The crash is open as well if you need it. And while they're heading out, please do grab your Bibles, everybody. And we're in the second book of the Bible, in Exodus, chapter 35. There you are. Thank you, Nick. <clears throat> Today's reading is taken from Exodus, chapter 35, verses 4 to 29. It can be found on page 94 of your pew Bibles. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, and another type of durable leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. All who are skilled amongst you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded, the tabernacle with its tent and its coverings, clasps, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases, the ark with its poles and the atonement cover and the curtain that shields it, the table with its poles and all its articles, and the bread of the presence. The lampstand that is, to, is for light with its accessories, lamps and oil for the light, the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, the curtain for the doorway at the entrance to the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the bronze basin with its stand, the curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases, and the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the tent pegs for the tabernacle and for the courtyard and their ropes, the woven garments worn for ministering in the sanctuary, both the sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence. And everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its services, and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewellery of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skins dyed red, or the other durable leather, brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord, and everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. The ladies brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil, anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will 
offerings for all the work the Lord, through Moses, had commanded them to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Nick. Great. Let me give you a chance to head down, please, do. Thank you so much. And, um, right, folks, do grab two things for me, your service sheet, and you'll notice on the back of it, space for notes. And then um, you've got a finance update. Now, try not to read this while I'm preaching, <laughs> but keep it to hand, that would be helpful. And let me pray. <clears throat> Lord God, thank you very much for an opportunity now to think uh, about how we can be involved in the work of uh, reaching out in your world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Please soften our hearts to be receptive to your word. Help us, Lord, to be ready to be challenged and where necessary to act upon that challenge. In Jesus' name, amen. There was once a strong man um, at a circus who demonstrated his power before large audiences every night. I may have told you this before. Uh, towards the end of one performance, he, he got a lemon, squeezed this lemon, squeezed the juice from uh, the lemon before everyone and shouted out, I want to offer 200 pounds to anyone who can squeeze another drop out of this lemon. So a number of people put their hands up and Big, strong guys came up and squeezed and went red and passed out and couldn't squeeze another drop out of this lemon. And then a, a thin, older lady hobbled onto the stage. I want to go. She picked up the lemon, clapped it between her two frail hands. And she squeezed. And out came an entire teaspoon of juice. And the strong man was amazed and said, how on earth have you just done that? And she said, well, I've been the treasurer of my church for 42 years and I can squeeze every last drop. Squeezing every last drop. Is that what it should feel like in God's church in order to make ends meet? Well, it is important, isn't it, to regularly consider what the Bible has to say on stewardship and how we should respond to what God has to tell us in the Bible. So we do try to have at least one sermon a year on Christian giving, or Christian stewardship. Stewardship is all about um, the responsibility that we have of planning, planning and managing resources, not least in the church today. And so what we're going to do is we're briefly just going to consider stewardship uh, or Christian giving. Now, I've chosen this passage in Exodus, um, and from this passage, my intention is to help us to delight in what Christian giving is. So we're just going to dive straight in. And I want you to see with me that first, Christian giving is joining in with God's work. Christian giving is joining in with God's work. Now, you may have noticed that as the passage was being read, there was some repetition. I wonder if you picked up on that. That's why it's really important also, by the way, um, to make sure you put the Bible in your hand, because uh, you can't pick those out um, just by watching it on the screen. Um, so, uh, if you haven't got it open, what is it, page 94. Um, there was the repetition in verse 4, and in verse 10, and uh, well, is it? verse 29, repetition of the Lord had commanded. The Lord had commanded. He commanded the people to get involved in the building of the tabernacle. And it is key that we see what a loving thing that was from the Lord. The Lord commanded that people of God, the people of God, got involved with his business of dwelling among his people. Now, this sermon is not specifically about the tabernacle and all that that's about. 
But it is, I think, helpful to just have a little mini overview of the tabernacle so that we're a bit more informed about what's going on and we're not confused by what I'm going to say. So the tabernacle looked a little bit like this. And the tabernacle was later replaced by the temple in Israel, built by David's son Solomon. The tabernacle and the temple later on was a place representing three seeds. Communion with God, cleansing from sin, and community within, but not exclusively, within Israel. So communion with God. The tabernacle was about communion with God. It was the place that God had commissioned so that the people would know in a very real and tangible way God's presence with them. It was a place all about cleansing. So it was the place where the sacrifices happened, uh, where people would say sorry for their sin and an animal was sacrificed in their place, all pointing to the final acceptable sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And it was a place of community. It was the place people in the fellowship of faith travelled to and in fact travelled alongside in order to worship God. Now, as I say, the tabernacle later became the temple, which later became the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you may know, described himself as the temple. And this is language picked up again and again in the New Testament. Why? Well, it's because Jesus is the one, we don't need that anymore, Jesus is the one who bridges the gap between heaven and earth. Through Jesus, we have communion with God. We have access, don't we, through Jesus, to the throne room of heaven. Jesus is the one in whom sin, cleansing from sin is found. So we don't need to make sacrifices anymore, do we, at a tabernacle or in a temple. Jesus is the once for all sacrifice. Do you see how this all points to Jesus? And Jesus is the foundation, or he is, as Ephesians 2 puts it, the chief cornerstone of the church, of the people of God. So in Christ, and because of him, there is community in the church with people from all backgrounds. Which is why in the New Testament, the people of God, you and I, we are called the temple. Because it is here that the assembly, within the assembly of God, that God dwells. Now, here in our passage, the tabernacle was clearly to be a very important place then. And so God called his people to get involved in his business of dwelling amongst his people. God could have just dropped the tabernacle from the sky and said, there you go, there's a tabernacle, there's a place to worship me, but he didn't do that. Why? Well, actually, it's because he invites his people to get involved. Being part of, whoops, <laughs> being part of the fellowship of faith involves the privilege of being involved in God's dealings with his people. So at my wedding, my dad wanted to do a speech, because he likes to do that. That's where I get it from, I think. Um, and he wanted to do a speech, and in his speech he said that um, uh, how he used to describe it was his little shadow. Apparently I used to follow him around, wherever he went. And when he was busy doing things, I'd want to be there. I was so pleased to join in as little as I was contributing, but I wanted to join in. And it was a delight for me to join in. And it was a delight for my dad to have his child joining in with his work. So it is with the people of God. You'd have noticed in the passage that there, in, it's involved um, a variety of skills to make the tabernacle and a variety of financial capabilities. So grab your Bibles, skills like uh, verse 25, uh, the women who spun with their hands, so the women who were, were um, able to um, work with yarn and fine linen, um, verse 22. There were those with financial capabilities who were willing and brought jewellery that could be used. Each of these uh, donations of time or money were needed. Everyone got involved with the work of joining in. And you and I today are invited to get involved with God's work, to support 
the building up of God's church in which God dwells to support God's work in the world through the gospel as we contribute to the building and the staffing and the evangelism and the outreach to those who need help. And um, as we join in with God's building up of the people, the true church of Christ, we're doing what God calls us to do, getting involved. The church, you see, is God's great building project. And it's always under construction. And we're called to get involved in that construction. So Christian giving is joining in with God's work. But it's much, much more than that. Christian giving comes from a willing heart. I wonder if you noticed in the passage that whilst God commanded people to get involved, giving was never forced. So have a look with me at verse 4. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze. And it goes on. God commanded, but the people needed to be, what does it say? Willing. Willing. And scattered throughout the passage is the repetition of the words, such as willing and offering. So verse 20, then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, and so on. Giving is never forced. It is the right thing to do because it builds a kingdom, but it is not to be forced. So the gifts in the passage are described correctly. They are offerings. And again, that is a word repeated in the passage. Seven times, in fact, in this passage alone. Uh, the word offering for those gifts. They are given by those who are responding to what God has done. Now, in Israel's case, what God had done was he had rescued them from slavery in Egypt, hadn't he? And brought them to a place where they could now worship him without fear. But that should mean that it, 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 it translates, it, um, it applies to us today. Because we know that our God has saved us too. Our Christian giving should be a response to Jesus' death on the cross. Our gratitude shows that our lives have been touched by grace. He has given all the riches of salvation in Jesus Christ. And so our response is to similarly give in response to what God has done. God has rescued us. He's given us all that we have. And the application of that truth, folks, is this. If we feel, if we ever feel forced to give, we have misunderstood Christian giving. Similarly, if we think at the same time it is unnecessary to being a Christian to give to the work of the gospel. As in, if we think it's some sort of an optional extra, we've misunderstood Christian giving. Because Christian giving comes from a heart that is thankful for all Christ has done. When our lives have been touched by grace, we want the building to be warm. It's a very welcoming place, isn't it? If the building is cold. It costs. Of course it costs. We give because we know it costs to heat the church. We want the Sunday clubs to have resources. They're not free. We want the Sunday club to have resources. We want Pathfinders to have resources. We want our Thursday club, our after school club, Thursday club, to have resources. We want to explore youth groups, don't we, to have resources. We want connections, our seniors work, to have resources. We want to run Christianity Explored, don't we? It's not free. Everything from the materials, the course materials and the licenses to run it, they're not free. It costs. And so we're happy to give because the last thing we want is for people to have to pay to find out about Jesus. How awful would that be? We like singing songs, don't we? For the privilege of singing. We need CCLI licenses. We've got the live stream. We need Wi-Fi. All together, just to sing in this building and have it live streamed, it costs us £700 a year. Just for the privilege of singing. Okay, £200 less if we weren't having the live stream. 
But we know how important it is, and you are very welcome, those of you who are watching us at home. And you are very precious, and so we want to make sure that you can join in with the service. God's people in Israel, though so often incredibly stubborn um, about God's call to live under his rule, were willing to contribute as a response to being saved. If you and I have been touched by grace, the question for us, which I know many of us have answered already, but we need to keep it on the agenda, the question is, are we willing to contribute from the heart. Well, that leads me to my final point, because if we're Christians and we're, we are uh, contributing to the life of the church, we need to briefly consider how we can approach our giving. For some of us, this will be old news. For some of us, this will be completely new. So let me give you my third and final point. Christian giving is planned, prayerful, and proportionate. How should we go about considering how to give? Well, as a sort of prequel to this point, we should be informed, shouldn't we? We should be informed. Um, information is key, and I think it would, be, it would be very awful and terrible leadership on my part if I didn't inform you and show you how every penny is accounted for here at Holy Trinity Field. What I've done, with the help of Steve, our treasurer, is to write a finance update for you. This is on the website, so if you're not here today, go to um, our website, go to the, the list, you'll see a, a link that says giving, and you'll find that on the page right there ready for you to read. Um, can I warmly encourage you, please, to read this? Um, I've done my utmost to make it as short as possible. <laughs> um, um, and. Um, uh, if you have any further questions, ask me or ask Steve, um, and our details are on the leaflet. Um, so I'm going to take it, that you're not going to read it now, you're going to go home, you're going to take it, read it, and be informed, and then, when you are thus informed, you're going to think back to this sermon, and you're going to think, how should I now go about giving to the work of the gospel? Number one. Oh, I did it in the wrong order. Well, let's say, well, what was said? Plan, plan, let's do plan. Plan, plan. Set aside time each year to think about your Christian giving. Why each year? Well, it is true that each year church expenses go up, but the primary reason is that you may be able to give more, but it may be that you need to give less. It very well might be the right decision, and even if it is uncomfortable to do that you need to make the right decision because our giving should be proportionate so i've done this in an awful order haven't i but there we are prayerful because you need to think through very carefully and commit to the lord what you can give and you need, therefore need to consider being proportionate there were two particular sentences used in the new testament for the description of proportionate giving in the church. Acts chapter 11, verse 29, uh, the phrase, as each was able, these are all in the context of giving. And chapter 2, uh, sorry, uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 3, they gave with the, um, the Macedonian church, this Paul is talking about the Macedonian church here, they gave as much as they were will, able and even beyond their ability. Because Christian giving will hurt. Don't do hear that, won't you? Don't mishear me that it's just loose change out of the pocket. Christian giving will hurt because it means not being able to do something we might have done with that money. And yet it should be out of proportion to our income, whilst also sacrificial. And then thirdly, it should be prayerful. So it should be planned, think about it. It should be proportionate. Um, is, we're not called to go, uh, we're, not, we're not called to starve, but we are called to giving that hurts and that we are willing to make um, uh, that sacrificial. Um, but it also should be prayerful. Prayer is a conversation with God, isn't it? That's what prayer is. So you have a conversation and you ask for wisdom from God. And you ask him to make you joyful in Christ. Martin isn't going to be able to convince you to give money to the gospel. I mean, look at me. What am I but a servant of Christ? 
and I'm fallible, and I'm just whatever. But the Lord Jesus Christ has died for your sin. Pray that God would make you joyful in him, committed to him, that all we have, we know, is from our Heavenly Father, who is a great giver. When we commit to him all that we have, let's be planned, let's be proportionate, let's be prayerful, and in all of this, we remember that our reason for any giving to the church is about Jesus. He is the main reason we give. Jesus, when he died on the cross, cried out, it is finished. Remember that word? Remember that Greek word I've said it a few times? Tetelestai literally means paid. When Jesus died on the cross, his last words, paid. The unbearable cost of our sin was paid by Jesus on the cross. So any payment on our part is not, not a contribution to our salvation. Rather, it is joining in with God's work of building his temple, building up the people who make the church. And so as a response from the heart, we delight in this great privilege to join in with God's work in a planned, prayerful and proportionate way. Next week at our APCM, uh, this is but a snapshot of the detail you will have um, the full detail of how every penny is accounted for here at Holy Trinity. Do make sure you're there for that. Let me pray as we close. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gospel. Thank you that uh, we can be joyful in it. And Lord, we're sorry when we hear the good news of Jesus and we, we, it just becomes almost so normal to us that we fail to praise you for it. And it becomes so normal to us that we fail to allow it to shape our lives, even in this area of giving. Please, Heavenly Father, make us delighted in this great privilege of joining in with your work in this planned, prayerful and proportionate way. Help us, Heavenly Father, to be able to keep reaching out with the good news. And thank you so much, Lord God, that we have many ministries running in church. We pray for protection on them that it would never be money that causes us to have to stop any ministries. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's keep praying to our Heavenly Father. Um, and it is a wonderful privilege to know that um, as we um, uh, consider our giving, uh, actually we're involved in this together. Uh, we're, not, we're not involved in this alone. We must give thanks to the Lord for everything that he's given to us so that we can be a church here in the field. So let me pray a thanksgiving prayer for our giving. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. And so we thank you for the privilege of joining in with your gospel work through our giving. Amen. When we pray together the Lord's Prayer, coming up on the screen, let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence within us that way we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continuously in righteousness and truth. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we gather in worship aspired by the generosity of heart displayed in Exodus. As your people offered willingly for the work of the tabernacle, May we too be stirred to give of ourselves generously. 
using our gifts and talents for the building up of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, we ask for wisdom and discernment for our leaders, both within the church and in the wider world, that they may govern with justice and integrity, seeking the well-being of all people. As Iran attacks Israel with missiles, we pray that this will not lead to outright, outright war. We remember before you all the troubled parts of the world, especially the Middle East and Ukraine. Give their leaders the strength to reach a just settlement, to be able to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, at this time of unprecedented heat waves, wildfires, floods, storms, and droughts. We pray for countries to take effective measures to reduce their carbon emissions. Help us to cut down carbon emissions by minimizing resource use, avoid plas avoiding plastic packaging, and other materials that cannot be recycled. We also pray for effective ways to be found to reduce the appalling waste of food produced globally. Please bless projects that redistribute surplus foods to charities, food banks and other organisations, especially the West Berkshire Food Bank, which we support. Lord, in your mercy, Blessed Father, we pray for our mission partners' reach. Help them to grow new Christians' unions at Forest Lunch Club and at Chilton Edge. Assist Anna and Sarah as they do their training this month to be able to teach relationships and sex education from a Christian viewpoint. Support them in their plea for help with accounting and for more money to come in as they continue to expand their work. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up those who are in need, remembering the vulnerable and marginalised in our communities. Grant them strength and support, and may we be the instruments of your love and compassion in their lives. In our parish, we pray for Anne and Sheila, giving thanks that Alan is now back at home. We also pray for Philip, thanking God that he is now beginning to improve, and for Kate as she struggles with her own health and tiredness. Merciful Father, please pray. We're going to sing, and uh, let me invite our musicians up. As we turn to remember the cross, we're going to remind ourselves of why we serve, why we serve others, why we serve the church. It is not least because we are saved by our great servant king. So let's all stand and let's sing, from heaven you came.
Do have a seat, everybody. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to turn to our communion prayer. Boys and girls, ah, oh, on cue, I've just come back. So let me just get myself set up here as they make their way back in. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls, love to see you back. I hope you had a brilliant time. Uh, we're going to pray in a moment as we're going to remember what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. And so just to remind of what we've got here, we've got our alcohol-free wine in this tub, for those of you who would prefer that. We have gluten-free bread in here, for those of you who would prefer that. And that's about it. So if you're still thinking through uh, who Jesus is and why he came, please do not feel under any pressure to take the bread or the wine. It is for you if you are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. It is joining in and saying, I'm part of him, I'm united with him um, in his death and in his resurrection. He is my Lord and my Saviour. So it's absolutely right. If, that's, if you're not saying that, to come up, I'll pray with you, and that'd be a real privilege and ple uh, pleasure for me to do that. Um, but if you are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, then drinking the wine, eating the bread, is absolutely for you. We're going to pray, and everything that you need to say will be on the screen in yellow. So let us turn to prayer. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who, in your tender mercy, gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one revelation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers by faith of his most blessed body and blood who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen.
The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this bread in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and drink this wine in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful.
We are going to pray together, a prayer coming up on the screen. This is the prayer set aside um, in the Church of England for today as we fix our eyes on Jesus. So let us pray together. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn, and this is an opportunity for us to verbalise what's in our hearts as we commit our lives to the Lord Jesus in serving him. Let's stand. Let's sing.
our final prayer. Let's say this all together. This comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We know it as a grace. Let's pray this prayer for one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.